Welcome to Trader TV Fixed Income, your insight into the trading climate for professional bond investors. I'm Dan Barnes. In May's show, we'll be talking with Dr. Kay Swinburne, MEP, Vice Chair for the Committee on Economic and Monetary Affairs in the European Parliament, about the need for a consolidated tape of trading data, the value it could provide for investors in Europe, and the problems that its absence creates. Market data is provided by MTS. Kay, welcome to Trader TV. Thank you. Good to be here. We'd like to talk today about the consolidated tape. And the concept was introduced of the consolidated tape provider under MIFID 2. This was the legislation that came in on the 3rd of January 2018. It's creating a level playing field of pricing data for the fixed income markets, regardless of whether you're institutional investors or retail investors. In terms of the value that a consolidated tape might provide to the end investors, the pension funds and the insurance funds, what would it actually do for asset managers? Well, for us as, as parliamentarians, we always saw that the data costs in Europe were hugely expensive compared to the US. Mm -hmm. And so the typical data feed in the US at the time was some $50. In the EU, the equivalent was 500 right. Orders of magnitude different. And yeah. so we actually thought you know, most of the buy side, particularly the smaller ones, would never be able to justify it getting that data and purchasing all of the data feeds that they would require for their entire portfolio. Mm -hmm. So we needed a method of democratizing that data. And the way of doing it, of course, is the consolidated tape. We didn't want to take away the ability for data providers and collators to make money. Mm -hmm. So that instantly available data that people are prepared to pay handsomely for. We felt unbundling was the way forwards, but not forcing them to do it for nothing. Yes. But actually, over a period of time when that, that sort of first advantage goes away within milliseconds or seconds. By the time you get to 15 minutes, the value of that data to the APAs is actually less. So what's an APA? So this is an entity that has an approved publication arrangement. Right. And so we felt that actually everybody should have access to it at that point, including the retail investor who was more sophisticated and wanted to go and actually look at that data for themselves. They should be able to go and look at it and make decisions for themselves. So whether it's buy side in terms of the asset managers mm -hmm. looking after other people's money, or indeed whether it was the retail investor themselves, we always felt that they should have access to that data. You mentioned that there's a US model for this already. There's a system called Trace, which is based in the US and run by FINRA, one of the self-regulatory organizations there. Why haven't we just copied the model they've used? Well, Trace, of course, started with just 20 names within it in terms of its uh, pre-trade transparency requirements and the way that the reporting was done. We always envisaged in Europe that because we were starting so much later than Trace, that we probably were going to look at a larger number of names and, and instruments than the 20 that Trace started with. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't copy it directly because we didn't actually know how many instruments were going to be involved. We now have the number of instruments mm -hmm. in the hundreds rather than in the tens. So it's a different system. But actually, we are at the stage where we have relatively standardized data inputs and, and data reporting coming out. But I see no reason at all why we will see a market-led solution to actually achieving a single consolidated tape. Because there are so many vested interests and data is so profitable for so many institutions that I'm not sure there is actually a commercial interest in anybody providing that consolidated tape. Well, that's very interesting because the European Securities and Markets Authority, it was proposed to them they might run the tape in a similar way that FINRA does. And I understand they've pushed back against that. Do you know why that would be? Well, the primary legislation foresaw that a market-led solution would emerge, mm -hmm. not just for fixed income, but for all asset classes, and in particular, the more mature equity markets, that a consolidated tape had been talked about and, and was an aspiration in MIFID I. Yes. And so it was envisaged that with new incentives, with new data being collected, that the market would be incentivized to actually come up with a new consolidated tape. I've always argued that the market incentives were the exact opposite and that we would have to revisit this over time. Mm. So the legislation, in primary legislation, so in the actual text, it does say that if a market solution is not uh, delivered within a two to three year time period, then we would have to look at what measures would be necessary, including whether or not a public utility model might be the most appropriate solution to this. FINRA obviously have delivered 
what is effectively a public utility model yes. and, and have one entity who will actually collect this data on behalf of everybody on the equity side and make it free at source. And on Trace, obviously Trace itself as an entity does that for the fixed income markets. So FINRA, we don't have the equivalent of in Europe. Mm. And so it's a question of whether or not the market-led solution can emerge or will emerge. I personally think it won't. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the public utility model is more likely to be either ESMA itself having this, or what we discussed at length was whether or not they gave a mandate for someone to tender for this work for a set period of time, potentially a five or seven year window where they would actually tender for the work and would be paid to deliver that. FINRA originally was a US sell side, that is dealer-led organisation. Um, there are some trade bodies like that, trade associations. Do you think one of them would be appropriate to step in and manage this? A possibility, but I think given that most of those trade associations are based here in London, and given the current political climate with Brexit, yes. I think the idea that it would be a trade association for the whole of Europe is, is unlikely. And so I think there is a lot of cynicism about the influence of London on those trade bodies as the global financial centre. And therefore, most of my colleagues in continental Europe would be a little suspicious if it was one of the trade bodies. I think they'd be more comfortable if it were a, a tendered process where an entity was actually tasked with the, the, the role of forming that fixed income Well, that makes platform. sense, of, of course. Um, of, there has been some discussion as well of having multiple consolidated tape providers. Consolidated versus multiple doesn't seem to go together. I mean... I think the issue for us was always about competition in the data space. Okay. So allowing multiple APAs, allowing those entities to report in a standardised way was actually a competitive uh, issue, yes. that we didn't see that as needed to be consolidated into one. So for me, it's, it's about how do we now actually go forwards? Is there merit for all of the APAs to effectively come together and say, you know, we make our money, you know, zero to 15 minutes, post 15, we will donate that data to a single uh, central consolidated um, app of some kind. Yeah. There has got to be a very simple technology that will take this data and actually allow it to, to come into one form to come back out again free at point of source to others. If you were to outline the most optimistic scenario then for development of a consolidated tape over the next five year period, what do you expect to see? If we talk about a pre-Brexit scenario, we talk about MIFID as it was originally envisaged and MIFID II for the fixed income space. For me, it was always a case of waiting and seeing whether the market delivered. Mm -hmm. And as I say, I personally was very cynical as to whether or not that was going to happen. There is an inbuilt mechanism two to three years into the implementation phase to actually make an assessment on whether it's going to be delivered. If it's not, then there are further measures foreseen in the legislation. Yeah. I think we would have been at that stage um, within three years of implementing MIFID. So I think we would have been there by 2021 had it been a pre-Brexit scenario. My only issue now is, of course, that so much of the fixed income trading is done through London. Mm -hmm. So much of it is done through London-based asset managers and through London-based firms generally, yes. that I am concerned that the will to actually put those further legislative actions uh, in place is probably diminished. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it was always the UK that wanted transparency. It was always the UK that felt that the asset management industry needed more tools to actually conduct their business. And it was never really my continental colleagues who were pushing it. Yeah. So I think we may end up finding that the MIFID II legislative agenda probably stalls in this regard. Whereas actually it may be that the UK decides to, to go down that route and that the UK itself will actually decide to, to take the initiative. Potentially then two tapes, one for Europe, one for the UK? Potentially, yes. Potentially, okay. Mm. I've always believed that the transparency of markets is the thing that gives confidence to investors and therefore the market that goes furthest in terms of transparency for me has a competitive advantage. So I would be encouraging the UK to, to be as transparent as possible going forwards and indeed I'd be encouraging those buy side to be pushing for it 
because it's in their interest and in their investors' interests that they have the best data set possible at the least expense to the asset manager to deliver it. Casey Winburn, thank you very much. Pleasure. I'd like to thank Dr. Case Winburn, MEP, for her insights today, MTS for our government bond data, and of course you for watching. To catch our monthly reports on the market or to subscribe to our newsletter, go to tradertv.net.